Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel. This is Yana Harris. I'm a principal front-end engineer. If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been diving deep into the world of UI component libraries, as well as modern ways to animate your experience. In previous videos, I had explored Radix UI component library, as well as Shotzian UI, which is built on top of Radix. I've also been playing around and exploring Framer Motion that is perfect if you're looking for physics-based animation in your product. Well, today we will be looking at something that actually combines a lot of those libraries together and packages them in a new and unique way. This is a library that development community has been buzzing about, and it's Magic UI. Magic UI certainly looks good when you look on their landing page, but let's take a look under the hood and see how it's built, what comes together to make it possible, and whether it's the right choice for your next project. If you love the high level of customization that Shatsian UI has to offer and enjoy the animation flexibility that Framer Motion has to offer, you're going to love Magic UI. It's like best of both worlds with a little bit of fairy dust sprinkled on top. Well, in a few words, Magic UI is a component library built for React. It is really straightforward to integrate and customize Magic UI components, and a lot of them come packaged up with eye-catching animations powered by Framer Motion. If you watch my video on Shatsian UI, you will see that taking Motion UI dependency is pretty straightforward and pretty much the same. Instead of installing an NPM dependency, Magic UI allows you to download the source code of each component so that you can own this code from this point on and customize it however you wish. Now let's walk through a step-by-step -step guide where I download a few Magic UI components and make them work together in a single page application. This is me following installation instructions for Magic UI. I'm actually going to compare it to Shatsian UI instructions and follow the Shatsian UI website. I had found that Magic UI installation instructions were missing a step or two that caused me a little bit of a headache. Once I went back to Shatsian UI, however, and read through their installation instructions, I was able to unblock myself and got my project up and running. So naturally, I have installed Tailwind CSS as well as initialized it in my project. Now I'm going to add additional TypeScript configuration so that I can map my component library and successfully reference it across my internal project files. After installing the node types, I'm going to go and grab the new Vite configuration. This configuration really has everything that I already had in my initial Vite file, but also adds a path alias to resolve a component source directory. I should be good to go and ready to start initializing Magic UI within my project. You can read through the steps on Magic UI documentation website, but basically you select a style and the color theme, as well as define where your global CSS file is going to be. Find your Tailwind configuration file location, choose whether to use TypeScript or not, and configure import aliases for your components, as well as utilities. Choose if you want to use service site rendering, and then generate components.json. If we see a success, now we're ready to go and grab individual components one by one. Let's go check my Magic UI folder. It's actually going to be empty because I have not downloaded a single component yet. Let's start with a retro grid. I'm going to run this command in a terminal. And once it's complete, I can go and see that now I have one component available in my Magic UI folder, and it's called RetroGrid. And then go directly to the installation instructions and copy paste the source of the example component. Don't forget to add your animation to your Tailwind configuration file. Otherwise, the component will not animate. Now, once I've added the animation into the Tailwind configuration file, my component animates exactly as it should have been. And a quick note, don't forget to import your global CSS file into the root of your project. If you don't do that, no styles are going to show up. I'm going to follow one more example and install the gradual spacing component for animated text. Copy paste the simple component into my project and see it show up right away. When you land on Magic UI homepage, you will notice that they actually offer a pro subscription. So what comes with pro? And does it worth spending a little bit of money to get a lifetime license? 
So one great feature of Magic UI that comes with a pro subscription, which can be a huge time saver, it's a collection of page templates. You will find a free portfolio template as well as a number of startup templates with a paid subscription. On their website, they're also announcing that they're working on software as a service set of templates that is coming soon, as well as a set of mobile app templates, but no clear release date just yet. So as I said, these templates can be a really huge time saver, allowing you not having to start from scratch. So let's look at the numbers. A single developer lifetime license costs $49, which is not too bad. And if you have a team working on your project, you can get a 10 developer license for $249. A pro license also includes a set of pre-built page sections, like a call to action or a hero or a header. This indeed could be a huge time saver in themselves. And the way that I see it, it's a set of higher order components that are built on top of the component library. One thing I really appreciate about the Magic UI team is that they actually put their roadmap public via feature base. On this page, you can discover new features and ideas that are being proposed, currently worked in, or about to get launched. You can even submit your own feature request. Among really useful and exciting feature requests are things like chat UI library, for those conversational AI chatbots I know you are working on right now. Although it seems like there's a set of components that is available for Svelte. But like any tool, Magic UI isn't perfect. It has a bunch of criticism that you see floating around online, and I would like to dive deeper into each one of them. The first point I'd like to make is that Magic UI is actually very highly opinionated in terms of the design system and the language. It's going to be really hard to try and fit Magic UI set of components into your existing design system. So if you're looking to start completely from scratch and build your design system around something that is ready to use, Magic UI set of components can be a great start for you, but you will have to match their design system, including topography, spacing, a color scheme, as you build out more components over time. The extremely opinionated design approach becomes really obvious when you start looking at their animated components. While a lot of those animations look really fun, they might not necessarily fit with your brand. This means if you're working with a designer or have your own vision for what your design system and your brand should feel and look like, Magic UI might not necessarily fit well and could be a little bit challenging to customize. If you've been around the block a couple of times, you might notice that Magic UI really resembles the design language from Linear App. When the Linear App first came out, I was really impressed by how polished their UI was, which is not to say that I'm not impressed by them anymore, but as you know, the best form of flattery is imitation. There is even a website that brings together a collection Linear App-like websites to show how many people have been trying to mimic them. And honestly speaking, Magic UI is not an exception. There is a quote floating around where Magic UI team had allegedly said, companies spend up to $30,000 to get a design like this, which is a completely fair statement, but that's often what it takes to be ahead of the curve. And it's always easier and more straightforward to copy someone else's design. Some people also say that Magic UI looks like a collection of really cool code pen snippets, which are really fun to look at on their own, but doesn't necessarily have to be put together in a single offering. So as a word of caution, you can tell that Magic UI has been designed to be really attention grabbing, which can be great when used correctly. However, it is critical to point out that you should be using those components to grab attention at the right time and at the right point during the life cycle of your application instead of bringing them all together all at the same time. You want to be really careful to not overwhelm your user with motion and instead use it strategically to make your application floor more engaging and actually make the point across instead of just making it flashing. Overloading a single page with too many of these elements can easily overwhelm the user and dilute the impact. And as a side note, just like Shotzi and UI, Magic UI heavily depends on Tailwind. So if you're not a Tailwind Pro, or if you prefer different styling options like CSS and JS or SAS, this might be a little bit difficult for you to adjust. All that being said, I really don't see anything wrong with taking a collection of new and exciting technologies and putting them together in new offering. Oftentimes, innovation is really a combination of set of existing solutions in a new and unique way. I really do think that these components look really, really polished and really do look like a lot of fun. What makes Magic UI stand out in my mind is that it really saves you time, but also helps you get this professional polish. Do watch out for performance though, as some users have reported seeing a significant slowdown on their web pages. So there you have it. Magic UI is definitely worth checking out if you're looking to streamline your development process while still delivering top-notch user experience. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click this like button and please subscribe to see more content like this. Until the next time.